55,000 to 56,000 and ages ranging from 21 to let's say 56. So the two are clearly incommensurate. The, the, uh, you know, the magnitudes of incomes are so much higher and if you just used income and age as they are for calculating distances, then income would dwarf age. It would dominate all distance calculations. You might as well forget about age. It won't play any role. But now, here are the mean and standard deviations for both of these attributes. If you compute this z values as x minus mean by standard deviation for each of the values, income we already said 25,000, 44,000 came to minus two point something. Okay. And if you look at the highest income, 56,000, 44 minus 56, uh, uh, 56 minus 44 is about 12 divided by 8,000 is about 1.5, 1.41. So this value is 1.41 standard deviations above the mean, and this value is 2.22 standard deviations below the mean. And you have a bunch of other values here. Ages, the mean is uh, 37.5, standard deviation is 11. So now 45 minus 37 is roughly 8 by 11. So this value is 0.66 above the mean, 0.66 standard deviations above the mean, and this value is 0.48 standard deviations below the mean. This value 21 is 1.45 standard deviations below the mean, etc. So now you see the range of both of these attributes is sort of related. It's quite close to each other. And now if you compute distances based on this, then no one attribute will be able to dominate distance calculations. This is very central to the K nearest neighbors approach or in fact, to any approach that uses distance calculations. Although standardization or normalization computing uh, z values as we have just described is a very common approach, it's actually not the only alternative or only game in town to do this. Another option is what we might call as rescaling. So what we could do is we've got the incomes and ages which are as of now pretty incommensurate. Incomes are so much higher than the ages, but what if we rescale the values so that the minimum income becomes zero, the maximum income becomes one, and all the values in between are appropriately scaled? Similarly, we do the same thing for age. The minimum age becomes zero, the maximum age becomes one, and every value in between is appropriately scaled. You can do that by taking for every value x. You do x minus min, where min is the minimum value of the attribute, divided by max minus min which is the complete range for that attribute. If you do that, then all the values will, be, uh, will become between 0 and 1, with 0 being the least and 1 being the most. Right? So now, both of the attributes, income and age, will all have values between 0 and 1. And therefore, no one attribute will be able to dominate distance calculations. Okay? So in practice, you could use either normalization or standardization or you could use rescaling as we have described. Often the results will be very, very similar, if not identical. So clearly, from based on what we have discussed so far, if you're using the KNN approach, either for classification or for regression, as we'll see later, you have to normalize or rescale all the predictors. Of course, even prior to this, all the predictor attributes have to be numeric. And you have to normalize them, standardize them, or rescale them so that all the attributes become commensurate and no one or two or a few attributes tend to dominate all your distance calculations, thereby nullifying the effect of other attributes. So all that is pretty clear. Okay. Now, since we are talking about distance computations, we obviously need all numerical predictors. But suppose you have a data set in which you want to use KNN for classification, but you have some categorical predictors. What do you do in that case? Because the technique requires distance calculations and requires numerical predictors. What if some turn out to be categorical? One thing you could do is simply leave them out, but that's not really a great solution because what if you think those predictors actually have predictive value and you want to use them? You can't just ignore them. So take this example. I've got a data set and you've got you know, age, status, height, and income. And the status is either student or unemployed or retired. Uh, those are the three values or employed, four values. And let's say the target attribute is income, which you're trying to predict. Uh, 
uh, which you're trying to classify into. Okay, so that's the target attribute. So if you're using a data analytics techniques that requires numeric predictor attributes, for example, KNN, then how do you deal with this attribute called status? Surprisingly, a technique called as the dummy attribute or dummy variable technique comes to our rescue. So let's take an example here. So we've got our original data set looks like this. Now status is a categorical attribute and cannot work when you do distance computations. So somehow we have to figure out a way to make status into a numerical attribute. How can we do that? Look at this. Now status has four different values. Student, unemployed, employed, retired. Those are the four different values. Notice what has happened to the data now. For we have added, you know, status is there, but we have added columns or attributes corresponding to all the different values that status can take. Student, unemployed, employed. Oops, what happened to retired? Is that a mistake? No, it's not a mistake as we will see shortly. Okay, so first of all, Notice that the different values of the categorical attribute that we are looking at have now become attributes. Okay, so the, the values of this attribute are student, employed, unemployed and retired. But we now have them as attributes. That's one important thing to notice. But why only three? I thought there are four different values of status. The reason we have only three is given the values of those three attributes, you can always find the value of the fourth attribute. Okay, so for example, in the first row, student is one, unemployed is zero, employed is zero, obviously retired has to be zero. You know, that person is a student and therefore we make student as one for that person. Right, this first person, uh, age 23, person is a student. So we take uh, that particular column whose value is this attribute and make that column as one, right? So this person, you're pretty much saying student, yes, unemployed, no, employed, no. If you think of one as yes and zero as no. And the second person is also a student, one, zero, zero. The third person is unemployed and therefore we say uh, zero, one, zero, right? So corresponding to whichever value it is, you put a one in that column, put a zero in the rest. Okay, now, why did we leave out retired? Well, for the first person, you can clearly see retired has to be zero. Second person retired has to be zero. Third person retired has to be zero. Okay. Now consider a case when the person is actually retired. Age is 29. Okay. Uh, and the person is unemployed. Or 58. The person is retired. Okay. And therefore, student is zero. Employed is zero. Unemployed is zero. Employed is zero. Therefore, retired must be one. Right. So that is why we leave out one of the attributes because its value is simply determined by the other attributes. Another way to say it is adding it would be redundant. Now in some techniques, predictive techniques, or regression techniques, uh, or classification techniques, if you include redundant information, it causes some problems. Right? What's the point in including redundant information so we don't include it? Now, why did we choose to leave out retired? Why not leave out student? Why not leave out unemployed or employed? It doesn't matter. You could leave out any one of those dummy attributes. These attributes are called dummy attributes because these were not real attributes, but we created them because we wanted numerical attributes. So if a, if a particular attribute, categorical attribute has n different possible values, like we had four different values here, we only keep n minus one of those values in the dummy attributes. Any n minus one doesn't matter which. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So in this example, you could try out, you have an attribute called gender. It has values female and male. Now, what would be the dummy attributes for that? You can see pretty easy. So let's say we create the, the new dummy attributes will be F and M. Those are the two different values. So we'll, you'll introduce attributes, new attributes called F and M, and you leave out one of them. Okay, we just chose to leave out M and keep F. So for those who are female, this will have a value of one. 
for those who are male, it'll have a value of zero, right? So now we took a categorical attribute like gender, which has values like male and female, and somehow we were able to make it into a numerical attribute with values of zeros and ones. Now, once you have the value zeros and ones, you can use it in computations for distance. That's the beauty. So if you're using KNN, and if you have categorical predictors, then convert them to dummy attributes. So to summarize, KNN for classification requires a categorical target attribute. If you don't have a categorical target attribute, then you have two choices. One is you can convert the numerical attribute into a categorical attribute, as we will shortly show. Or alternately, you could consider using KNN for regression instead of KNN for classification, right? Why does it require a categorical target attribute? Because we are saying it's classification, right? You will classify it into one of the categories. But if you have a numerical target attribute, you could instead use KNN for regression. It's a technique we'll talk about later. Alternately, if you think classification is what you want to do, then you use a technique of binning to change the numerical attribute into a categorical attribute, as we will shortly show. And KNN for classification requires numerical predictors. We have seen that already. And if your predictor is not numerical, use dummy technique. Let's now see how to do binning or how to convert a numerical target attribute, a numerical attribute into a categorical one. This technique is called binning. Binning in the sense of taking the values, the numerical values, and putting them into some bins. That's all it is. So let's say you've got some original values, which are ranging all the way from 1 up to 238. Some numbers, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a numerical attribute. But if you want to convert it into a categorical attribute, then you could do something like this. You could just say all the values between 0 and 50 are A, just classified as A. You know, this A could be whatever. You know, it could be buyer, non-buyer, high, medium, low, whatever you want it, the context of your application. And then uh, 50 to 100 is B, 100 to 150 is C, etc., etc. Okay, so you can do this. And then after that, you can take the original values and put them into bins based on this conversion. So for example, 60 is uh, between 50 and 100, so it's a B. 14 is between 0 and 50, so it's an A, and so on. 35 is between 0 and 50, it's an A, right? So after this process, your target attribute is now a categorical attribute. It has values A, B, C, D, E, F. That's it. 